Hi, we're back, and uh, here we are at the 54th Annual Meeting of the Council of Science Editors in Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm speaking with Bruce Stancic, Editor-in-Chief of the NRC Research Press in Canada. Um, and what we'd like to talk a little bit about is choosing a journal. Why a specific journal? What types of things authors should look at in uh, selecting a journal? And I know that you certainly have some views in this regard, and maybe you can just sort of frame from the uh, perspective of the of the uh, of the journal, not the editor of the journal, but the journal itself, as to what types of papers a journal is looking to find, and then we'll get into uh, how the author should be looking at a journal and what journal they should be looking to find. Sure. Uh, as far as uh, what an editor looks for, he's looking for something um, that will be of interest to his uh, readership. He's looking for something that is novel, uh, that has a certain element of newness to it. It can't be just reiterating the same thing that, that uh, readers have heard 50 times over before. So they're looking for something something new, something that has an unusual twist to it, an interesting experiment, an interesting study design. Um, and that's often a, a problem for authors. Uh, journal editors see so many manuscripts crossing their desks that these days, it isn't like it was 40, 50 years ago, where um, if you if you made it to the uh, submission stage, you were likely to see it published in that in your journal of choice. Now, most journals are rejecting uh, half, two thirds, or more of their of the manuscripts that they see. Often, perfectly good manuscripts, high quality science. So, what is it about it? That's it's just not quite in the scope of the journal. That's right. So you've you've got to look at their uh, look at what they they publish. Look at what they say. Some journals have a little uh, description of the kinds of things that they're interested in publishing, and sometimes they change those over time. Mm -hmm. Call up the editors, or better yet, if you're at a, a, a discipline meeting and you see some journals advertising there and having booths there, talk to them. The editors or the, or the members of the editorial board will often be manning the journal at those at those meetings. Um, talk to them about your work. Talk to them about what they've been publishing. See if you get any interest. Okay, uh, so in let, let me explore that a little bit because in many cases, authors in submitting grants are often very wary about contacting granting agencies. They're very wary about contacting editors because they think that there's some negative in it. There, there's, there's just an anxiety about contacting the journal editor in advance, where I believe that, quite honestly, these, uh, these types of interactions really need to be proactive in that you can actually um, talk to the editor in advance and identify whether, in fact, it's worth your while to submit to that, to that journal. Yeah. So what are your views as to how one's author's efforts should be at approaching the journal because the other side of the coin is, uh, if an editor is approached by every author, they just simply may not have the time of day, and, and there may be some bias put into the contact. Sure, that's understandable. I, I guess I'd, I'd particularly do it at places and venues where they are there to, to, to talk to authors, uh, so that, that situation at a meeting, at a, at a discipline meeting, where they happen to be manning a booth for the journal is a good a good venue. That's what they're there for. They want to they want to meet uh, authors. They want to meet people who are interested in, in papers. And, and I don't know how many times it happened to me when I was editor of one of our journals that uh, at a meeting or someplace like that, I'd run into even colleagues that I knew, and uh, we'd be talking about their work, and I'd say something like, "Gee, we'd be interested in seeing some some manuscript from you." No guarantees, of course, but and they said, "Oh, I didn't realize you'd be interested in that." In this mm -hmm. kind of work, uh, and so find out. Often that that uh, is a silly little barrier that's that's in, that we put in the way ourselves. But the editor is quite open to it. So most editors I know are quite receptive to talking to authors about the possibility of. And, and if not contacting the manager, uh, the the edit the editor of the journal. If you go down the masthead of the journal and you identify the managing editor or other people who are in the process, and maybe they may be good points of contact as well with less, yeah. less influence or less worry about the, the editor's time that you're taking. That's right. And certainly the members of the editorial board, because in many journals, not all, but in many journals, they'll be making the decision on who, which referees are going to be uh, seeing the paper, and they'll often be making the initial decision on whether we should 
long-term if you look at the manuscript at all, whether later on after review if it should be accepted or not, a uh, recommendation to the editor. And so those are very key people to, to, to talk to. Okay, so let's get into what the editor is looking for. What do they want uh, to see from um, uh, uh, from an author? Uh, and we'll get, we'll get into a little bit deeper, but in choosing a journal, um, issues of impact factor, issues of uh, of quality. What are the editors looking for, and what are the what metrics should the authors be worrying about in selecting a journal? In, in first, for that latter part, for selecting a journal, um, what's what's an important journal in your field? What's its impact factor? If that's important in your discipline, uh, some disciplines it's not important. In the engineering, for example, in some of the uh, natural sciences. Not important. Uh, journal half-life may be very important. Those that have a long half-life, greater than 10 years. Yeah, citation half-life. That's right, citation half-life, because it indicates that uh, papers keep getting cited. They're important papers. Yeah. Things like time to print as well, uh, from an author's perspective. That's right, certainly. Look at look at their turnaround time. Look If they do publish it, or you can find that out from a managing editor or the office of the journal, how long does it take from, a, from submission of a manuscript until average date of, of a decision, acceptance or rejection, and then how long to, to print or online afterward. And in, in general, the journal spectrum, you have online journals versus purely print journals, which are relatively rare these days, but then you have open access models, and there's very there various types of journals right. that have different time to publication, uh, different fees for uh, publication, That's things right. of this nature. Do you have any opinions of how this landscape is going and, and what it means for the editor <laughs> versus the author? All the publishers wish we knew that, <laughs> that, quite, that answer, didn't, don't they? Uh, certainly, we're going more electronic. Uh, some journals are going all electronic. Some are still uh, combinations of paper and electronic, like most of ours are. Uh, I think we're going to see primarily electronic mm -hmm. journals of the sciences in the future. Um, the, uh, but but that's, that's just one factor in, in, in publication. Whether it's open access or not, that's a, that's a good question. It still costs money to run an editorial office to do peer review, and most of us want our work to go through a peer review process. We don't want to publish in the vanity press. Uh, we, don't want to, we don't want to spend the time ourselves if we're trying to read things to, to, to uh, sift through the, the wheat and the chaff to find the kernels of, of uh, wisdom in those papers, and so we want some help along the way. Um, and so I think we, we, we're going to want peer review, and therefore that costs money. And whether that comes from grants, from governments who are supporting, or agencies or, or foundations that are supporting a journal, or whether it's through an open access fee or page charges or the, the full spectrum, somewhere there's going to have to be some uh, payment for that. And that's, that, that's where we're all, all publishers doing these days. Mm -hmm. So n now from the author's perspective, what... Uh, really, should they? Do you think that they should be looking for and, and paying attention to specifically in selecting the journal, as opposed to the, the general things as to whether it's open access or? Sure. Look for something uh, a journal that publishes those kinds of papers that uh, your you work in the areas that you work in. Um, look for journals maybe that are moving in a certain area that that is now uh, uh, the discipline that you're working in. Uh, talk to other colleagues that work in the same area. What do they think are the hot journals in their area, the places that they want to publish things today? Not 10 years ago, but today. Where do they want to go? Um, look at these other factors that we talked about, like turnaround time and how long it takes to get things published and whether there are any barriers like the fees and things that uh, to an author. So we'll, we'll, we'll address some of those features uh, in a short while. Uh, what I, w w as you were talking, what I was thinking about was... Um, the uh, the realistic expectations of the author a lot of a lot of authors out of emerging markets or out of Asia sure. are, are not necessarily used to interacting with the uh, what I'll refer to as Western journals Western English language journals and there's barriers of culture and things of this nature uh, in a, in interacting or their perceptions of how they need to interact with these journals. Um, and maybe we can talk a little bit about those barriers, but what I was looking to get to is um, how should they set the realistic expectations as to what journals they should be submitting to. 
they may know of only the top end journals because they've heard the name of the journal, the sure. name of the brand, right? And they may think those are the only journals that are available. What would you suggest to them as to how to go about looking for journals with a realistic expectation of being actually published in those journals? I think one of the first things one has to do is to look at their own study, and and and, and seriously, maybe with some colleagues helping them decide: is this of interest? Um, Regionally, is it of interest nationally? Is it of interest in an area of the world? Is it interest of interest to potentially to readers around the world? And then pick a journal accordingly uh, for that. If if it's a, if it's strictly a study of something that is likely to be, oh, what's an example? Um, something that relates to uh, in engineering to building codes in a particular region. Those are, those are very nation-specific, region-specific, um, and so they may not have broad uh, interest. Or relevance. Or relevance, that's right. However, sometimes there's a surprise about that. And for example, um, one of our journals, uh, Canadian uh, Geotechnical Journal, published a, 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 or the Canadian Journal of Civil Engineering, I can't remember which one, published a, a, a whole uh, issue focused on the Kobe earthquake in Japan because the, what they learned in that earthquake and on construction techniques and on engineering for buildings had broad application around the world. And they thought this was something to do. So one has to be careful with that, but I think one can more realistically pick something. If you're, if you're writing a paper about um, some particular organism that has a limited distribution in a particular part of the world and, doesn't, and you haven't framed the question or uh, the relevance of the experiment into broader terms, it's likely not going to have um, interest to the editor of Nature or the editor of Science. Uh, so one has to to be realistic about that when they when they approach it. Okay, so um, let's bring a little bit of closure to this in the sense that uh, we we touched about what the editors are um, uh, the editorial process a bit and, and the uh, we talked a little bit about impact factor and other types of metrics. We talked about how the um, author should have a realistic expectation of um, where they're submitting to based upon the, the specialty and, and the context of their research. 